just got hit. A serious game that was played last night. I could have lost the vote, I could have lost my life. It was, it was, I, I got control of a situation that was out of control for a while. Not fun. This is a scene from the last episode, Hardcore Adventure. If you haven't seen it yet, go back and check it out. Lots of explosions, girls and jungly action stuff. And in this episode, we've got lots of sailing action coming up. But in the meantime, I had to get back to the boat. Well, we're on our way back and we stopped at a, a, a shop. So I think somebody said, could do with a few beers. So we stopped, at it, but it's closed. So we're... I'm not quite sure what's going on. No, I'm not sure as well. I think somebody said they want beers. So. You have yeah. peanut butter though. You've got oh. peanut butter. Yeah, and some spoons. <laughs> we're going we, to trade peanut butter for beer. Yeah. Another not so nice day. Lots of swell, uh, lots of wind. So I've decided to take a, a little hike off the boat, getting a bit stir crazy, need to get ashore. I'm here for another day or so. Most of the other boats are here uh, still because the, the weather outside, again, strong wind, uh, big, big swell. The weather's now been bad for about two weeks, uh, but it's finally due to break as of tomorrow. So we'll see how we go from there. There's a local family that live at this end of the beach and their little girl here decided Hello. that she wanted to be my guide uh, and show me around. Captain Cook came here 220 some years ago, named this place Resolution Bay after the ship Resolution, which was the second ship he had on his second expedition. I'm kind of looking to see if there's anything I can see of uh, Cook's time here. I strongly doubt it. He was only here for a couple of weeks. Um, and I think he had a pretty good, in all in all, he had a good reception, although one of his sentries did shoot a local, which kind of soured things and they, uh, they left. <laughs> the resolution must have been out there a little bit in the bay because it's quite shallow up here. But uh, they, they definitely came here and there is fresh water here. So uh, if you're on a ship, especially in those days, and you find fresh water, that's a very good thing. Like Robinson Crusoe, I've discovered footprints on the beach. <laughs> These are other tourists. I'm quite happy because they actually haven't eaten anybody here for quite a while now. That was a problem. Uh, that's kind of why the missionaries came here. They sort of said, you can't go around eating each other. Um, so they ate the missionaries. Not all of them, but they did some of them. That doesn't happen now. They don't talk about that past. <laughs> we all have our skeletons in the closet. <laughs> Left the beach, coming inland. But this inland lake fascinates me. This is what I've come to look at here. In order to give my, my theory uh, fact, I had to find out if this actually was fresh water. It was very, very unusual to find such a huge body of fresh water that close to the sea. I mean, the sea was just over behind me there. It was then all of a sudden my young guide got really upset with me. And uh, it was because she was concerned for my safety, bless her. Uh, it told me that the water, in fact, wasn't safe to drink. I love these dugout canoes. It's, it's just the first time I've ever seen real ones. French Polynesia, they got plastic ones, but here they have the, the actual original style that they still use from all those years ago. This technology, I mean, the whole thing about it, just some sticks pushed in to hold that outrigger. Unfortunately, they're using modern materials here, but in the old days, it would be something different. I mean, that's a lot of work. A lot of 
of work to make that. All this marine archaeology, living archaeology, is fascinating. But another thing that interested me was this. Yes. It appeared to be a cottage just tucked up at the top of the bay. Wow. This would be worth a fortune back in the real world. Hey, it even had roses. I could really imagine myself living here, I really could, and waking up and seeing this view every day. It couldn't always be cloudy, they must have sunny days here. And then I saw these. These are steps cut into solid rock going up to the house. This kid is amazing. She's kind of following me everywhere. But she's kind of looking. She's kind of looking for stuff. And it's little shellfish. They're getting washed up in the, in the surf. She can see them. And she's leaping on the things. That's amazing. She's sort of feeling with her feet as, as it pulls the water back, she can see. Well, at last the sun is out and the sky is blue. And the swells come right down. From what it was it was getting pretty darn nasty and uncomfortable uh, there's some people who are sick here in the uh, anchorage apparently i don't know uh, what it is yet i'm inclined to think it might be um, a bit of bad food or something uh, involves throwing up so i don't think that's covid or anything like that um i'm going to stay clear in the meantime plus what i ate last night is enough to make anybody ill i mean look at that that is um that's nasty. It won't even come out of the pan. Just wanted to show you how close we are to volcanic um, action. That's just over there, look. <laughs> it's very, very close. Yes, and in case you're wondering, that is smoke coming out of the ground in the jungle. Those that know me know that I'm not really into hiking, but today I thought I'd give it a go take myself out for a little jungle hike. There's a pig in there. Hello, mate. Everything looks the same up here, so we need to work out how and why. Yes, I was well and truly lost. I could see the headlines now. YouTube sailor lost in jungle. Rotting corpse found oh. next to dead pig. This is pretty. Ah, this might be it. Oh yes, that's a very nice house. This looks like the beach. Oh yes, shady off in the distance. I saw this place as I was coming in on the boat. I thought it just looked gorgeous. I don't believe this. I think this is a mango tree. Is that mango? That's a bit of beach up. Look at this. That's amazing. This is part of a boat cockpit. That's off a boat. That is a boat. Uh oh, probably ended up on the reef. Back on the boat, I enjoyed that. That's why I like this place better than Fiji. It's like the real deal. Uh, wilderness at its best. And I've been wanting to use this for a while. I found it on a free table. Uh, in New Zealand, uh, where cruisers leave stuff they don't want anymore. Uh, that's it's that's brutal. And I call it a coconut killer, and it has. I've never I've never used it yet, and I have today. <laughs> I still don't know how to do this properly, but it's still sticking to the coconut. 
Had a visit from Mel. She came round to say her goodbyes. Oh, hello. Grab, grab something. Good morning. After that, she went back to her boat and they did a flyby. Oh, the girls are going. Just what you expect me to do, Goldfinger. It was brilliant. They came across the bay dancing to James Bond music. Unfortunately, I can't play it because it's copyright and I'll get a hit. Uh, so uh, you can just imagine that sound and those girls. I have to say, it kind of left an empty space in my life when they left. We'd had a great deal of fun on the island and I'd known Mel since the uh, Fungari days in New Zealand. So I was back by myself. It was good seeing Mel again and Claire and I met uh, Kat, uh, lovely ladies, and they're all having fun together, uh, traveling. I'm next, I think. And the weather is finally, finally, finally coming down. It's been probably two and a half weeks, maybe nearly three weeks of non-stop bad weather. Lots and lots of wind, huge sea. So that's why everybody's been in here and people are gonna start leaving now. Lots of smoke coming from the hillside over there. I don't know if we're in for a big, uh, big eruption or anything. Maybe it's good, uh, good I'm getting out of here. Got the magic finger again, the smoke there. And there's some more there and there's some more up here. Just coming up to eight o'clock in the morning and I'm out of here at last. The weather is now good. So getting uh, all my bits of tech working. Radio is on. My satellite tracking stuff is on. Meanwhile over here had a bit of a problem with the AIS this morning. For some reason it didn't get a GPS signal. I think it was a loose terminal. I tightened everything up and it's working now. Just makes you think how much you depend on this stuff. That's where we are in this little bay. Uh, that's the island of Tanna where we came in and I'm going to go possibly to this one here. There's a little beach bar, but I, I don't know. I think what I'm going to do is go up to this island. Uh, this is the main island and a place called Port Villa. I'm going to kind of miss this place, Tanner. It's a beautiful little island and it's like going back in time, uh, maybe to the 1950s or something. Uh, they lead a very simple life here, but they're super, super lovely people. can actually see uh, most of Mount Yasa back there. Uh, part of it is the volcano, which we went to the other day. No smoke this morning. It was smoking a lot last night. That jungle looked like the whole thing was just smoking away on fire for a while. I'm like, Whoa. Still a bit roly-poly in here. And it will be a little bit out at sea, but the, the wind has come right down. I think we're only looking at about 12 knots. Um, so hopefully a pleasant sail. Gonna turn all the deck instruments on in a second. Gonna get past the uh, reef out there. Hard to believe I've been in this paradise now for two weeks. Got the funny hats ready because it's gonna be hot and burny out there. But before I go, my second cup of coffee. Always two cups of coffee in the morning. Got the mainsail up after lots of huffing and puffing. It's not set yet, it's just up, that's all. Uh, got to concentrate on getting out of here now. Rocks to the left. And the beach to the right. By the island of Tanna. I enjoyed it. That was a nice place. to go down there that's the end of the island way way over there can't turn down yet because there's a sandbar just over here Whoa. slow progress got the full main up I had to sort of loosen off the foresail because she kept pulling up into wind because the wind is almost directly behind us. And it's looking a bit ominous and nasty over there. And as you can see, there's land. That's the next island which we, uh, we're not going to. We're going to go around, but we're headed straight for it almost. I'm trying to clip the very, very end here. But I'm not sure we're going to make it, so I might have to tack 
over, over that way and I'll wait a little bit longer before I do so. The thing is though, it's getting dark, it's getting late in the day and I'm very tired. So I must not fall asleep uh, now. <laughs> it will be very bad. I tell you what, if I was in Central America, Panama or somewhere like that, or the Caribbean, and I saw a sky like that, I'd be really worried. But it is forecast as being benign, although it does look horrible. But again, this wind is just in the wrong direction for this boat. And uh, I'm having a hard time keeping her going up into the wind. I was right to be concerned about the weather. Things we're about to take a turn for the worst. It's definitely the quiet after the storm. We just got hit by something that was, well, I've never seen anything like it in my life. I, I honestly thought I was gonna lose the mast. Uh, she jived a few times. I was down below and uh, the wind started howling and a turby, the turbine, makes a strange noise when it gets to 30 knots when he made that noise then he went above that and i've never heard him i reckon it was probably something in the order of 50 knots um, it was complete whiteout. the boat was not on her side but um, i was finding the water coming in, in here uh, I, I got on the helm and hung on there was nothing i could do Luckily, I put a, a reef in the main late last night. I should have put one in. We had bad weather all last night. We've been bouncing off waves. I saw there was a big red spot on the on the weather forecast thing. And I, I didn't think we were going to get that, but we did. I'm, sh I'm freezing cold, I'm shivering. It, it, it's just the aft aftermath now, it's gone. Um, I'm, I'm under, I, I managed to get the main down. It's, it, there was a little lull and it started pouring a rain and I went on deck without any harness or anything. I didn't have the time to, I had to get the sail down. I thought if I don't, I'm gonna lose the mast. So that's all in a mess on the mast now. I've learned a few lessons on this. There's a few things I need to change on this boat. Um, for, for situations like that, that was serious. That's a mess, but it was literally clawing it down while I was hanging on to the boat. That's backed up there, that's fine, it's doing whatever it's doing. Gone across the wind and the waves again. All night I've been trying to go downwind and she won't do it, won't do it, won't do it. So we're lying across the wind and the swell again. We've been doing this all night. And there's another nasty coming up behind me. Right, I'm going below, I'm freezing. I know you. you I mean, there's, there's nothing. There's nothing to see out there at the moment because it's it's gone. And there's no there's no way I could film it. My fowlies are completely soaked through. Not fun. And of course, it's a success story, as it is surviving the storm last night. Uh, I explained a little bit about it earlier on, um, and I didn't film any of it. It was, it was the boat was on its side. Um, I, I kind of worked out it was a force nine, force ten, a proper gale. I mean, it was the real thing, uh, completely unlike anything I'd come across before. Um, super powerful, and I was unprepared for it. Um, I had a bit too much sail up. I, 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 I took a reef in shortly before it came, actually, um, remembering what I did now. Um, so it wasn't a full sail up at the time, which was good. Uh, nothing broken, nothing that I found so far anyway. When, when the storm had blown through, um, everything just stopped. Everything stopped, nothing, nothing at all. Bright sun up there. Uh, but there are a few dark clouds. It was um, a serious game that was played last night. Um, 
I could have lost the boat. I could have lost my life. It was, it was. I, I got control of a situation that was out of control for a while, and it was hard work to get it back in control again. Um, and there was a little lull, and I went on deck, and I got the set the mainsail down, and then we were safe because it was blowing, and the boat was pretty much on its side at one point. So, um, scary stuff. So tonight, please, please. Tranquil and nice, please. Just down below, having my fish and rice and enjoying every moment of it. And then I noticed the colors. And I hadn't realized, or I haven't seen a sunset as beautiful as this for quite some time. And it usually means it's gonna be good. Um, certainly yesterday, there was, there was nothing but cloud and rain and wind and horribleness. So uh, to see that now, I'm hoping that we're in for a good night and a good day tomorrow. Let's hope so. I need it. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please subscribe, press the notifications bell. Thank you so much to my patrons for keeping this whole project afloat. I love you guys so much. Thank you very much indeed. Instagram, Facebook and Twitter for real-time updates. I'm always there. Um, you take care of yourselves. See you next time.